from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE. We're here in New York City for on the ground coverage, or here three days, wall to wall, for Blockchain Week New York. It's part of Consensus 2018, sold out show. We're in the middle, we're out in the open. Open, open up all the content. Our next guest is Alex Mashinsky, founder and CEO of Celsius, um, seasoned entrepreneur, great debater on stage, had a great uh, brawl recently at the Milken Institute. We'll, we'll talk about that. But more importantly, he's uh, got a great project uh, called Celsius. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks. Thanks Come. for having us, John. So I love, we were just chatting before camera, but camera turned on about some of the things you've done. The mil you got into a little bit of a great heated panel discussion. Uh, about with someone who actually doesn't even hold cryptocurrency, but he was saying it's all bullshit. <laughs> yes. Right, so t tell about the story. It was written up by Bloomberg. Um, what was this famous, you know, brawl in the Milken Institute? So, yeah, so look, the Milken Institute, been, you know, they've been having conferences for the last 25 years, and they're trying to combine the making money with doing good in the world, right? So it's doing well and doing good at the same time. And that's what crypto is all about, right? And then, so they had a panel about crypto with me and Nouriel Rubini, who was like Dr. Doom, uh, who predicted the last 15 recessions. There were only two, but they predicted 15, all 15 of them. So I was telling him, you know, even a, even a broken clock uh, is right twice a day, you know? <laughs> he was going at me, he was going at the community, he was calling it a scam. And uh, when you don't own any coin and you have not come to an event like this and seen 8,000 people celebrate this innovation, power to the people, then what are you talking about? So, uh, you know, I was there to really defend the community. It wasn't about me or him. Yeah, you did a good job. Well, thank you for doing that. It's also, you're on a great project. We, I can talk about a lot of other things I want to get to uh, or in the industry that you have a, a view and opinion on, I would like to get. But your project, Celsius, uh, take a minute to explain that because I think this highlights really what's going on. I chatted really earlier today about token economics. This is a new way, a new infrastructure, a new capability, a new mechanism that's really becoming powerful of a network effect. Yes. So the old world was DNS, and 30 years old stack on e-commerce, yeah. search engines. They're not accurate for network effects. A new dynamic, a new data source is happening and it's creating new value new data. Yes. Talk about Celsius, the project, and your value proposition. Right, so Celsius Network is, is basically trying to create an algorithmic cloud-based solution that does everything in your best interest. So you have to think of it as a basket of financial services that do th simple things like give you a loan or allow you to earn interest, right, give you access to a lot of great financial products, insurance, and other things that all together do everything in your best interest, right? And, and what we're doing is we're enabling uh, 100 million people, new people, to come into the crypto community and enabling them to benefit from all these things, both from the increase in the value of the coins, but also allowing them to, their money to earn money for them. And today, if you think about banks, right, they take your money, right, you make a deposit, they take your money, they lend it to me on my credit card, they charge me 25%, they give you 1%. So they take all that margin that you talked about. They squeeze all yeah. of that and keep it to themselves. And they're representing two people. It's like a right. realtor. Who do, who do you represent? The buyer they're or the seller? They're a total collector in the middle, exactly. They're not adding any value. Right? So the new shift is on user value. And exactly. you see real world examples of this. The whole Facebook debacle. Who owns your data? Exactly. And Mark Zuckerberg is up in front of a test in front of the Senate and Congress saying, no, we don't sell your data. No, but they license the data <laughs> and they use They extract they all the value they, they from it. They don't actually sell the data, true. But they license the shit out of it they squeeze you. every last penny out of it, you know? This so, is now obvious to people. Yes. That problem. Yes. Talk about the crypto benefits. Where is this shift happening? Users, the power to the people, I get the phrase, but where's the, where's it happening? The so token for level? Example, yeah, let's take an example. So all, most of the people here on this floor, they take their coins, they put it on exchanges, and they celebrate the fact that the coin went up 50, 100% or whatever, but they don't realize that they're leaving a lot of money on the table because these exchanges do shorting, front running, all kind of other stuff that should be illegal, but they do it, right? So they announce these amazing earnings, right? Binance announced amazing earnings, and a lot of that earnings comes from the money that should be given back to you and me. So if you think about the, uh, the credit card company giving you 2% back, this is kind of the same thing. 
we are basically taking all of that earnings and giving it back to the coin holders, right? And we're saying, don't keep your money on exchanges, keep your money in a wallet that represents your best interest, that extracts all that value and gives it back to you. And so what's your value proposition? You go to use and say, use our wallet, use our system, right? and then you represent their currency? So we, we, we huddle together, we create a giant pool of BTC, a giant pool of ETH, right, or, or other coins, and we lend against that. So we can do loans to the community, we charge 9% for asset-backed loans, basically, so you need a loan against your crypto, you, this way you don't have to pay taxes, you can defer your tax, you can get liquidity without triggering uh, all the tax that today you, you, you have to, or you can just earn the interest. So without selling the coins, you can basically generate five to nine percent income that's continuous on top of the appreciation. You still get all the appreciation in the coin, but you're also generating income. So you can bring contextual services around the crypto holder interests. Yeah, so we, we find people who are willing to pay that. For example, other crypto holders who want the loan, and they pay us 9%, we give 5% to the community. Hedge funds who short BTC or ETH, they pay us 10 or 15%, we give most of that back to the community. But you don't have to, the beauty is that the coin holder doesn't have to do anything. They don't have to move from this account to that account. They don't have to tr do transactions. All they have to do is, is decide if Celsius Network is doing everything in their best interest yeah. or not. And the point is that the next 100 million people that are going to join crypto, they're not speculators or anarchists or libertarians like most of the people here on the floor. They're people who kind of look at all this saying, it's too complicated, I don't know what to do, I'm not going to get in at the right okay. time, I'm not going to get out at the right time. They don't have anyone they can trust. So I'm going to, be, I'm going to ask the, uh, the average Joe six-pack question. Hey, that's all fine, I love what you're doing, come on, sign me up. But wait a minute, if you put all this crypto in one spot, the freaking hackers are going to get it. Right. Because how do you protect me against, I heard, see Mount Gox was in the, and all this right. stuff's going on. I'm worried that it's yes. going to get hacked, even exactly. where I put it. And then Nouriel basically asked me the same question. So in, in 10 years since Bitcoin was created, there hasn't been a single instance of anyone cracking the blockchain itself. All the theft, everything that happened was because we gave somebody our private key and we entrusted them with it and they screwed yeah. up. Mongox, they basically broke into the exchange and so yeah. on. So we keep everything in cold storage, right? So it, and it's not ours. We have a custodian that is a giant company that is willing to accept all of that, keep it in cold storage, right? And we lend against it. We lend against the pool. So the private keys going in cold storage? Everything is staying in cold storage, which is the safest way to keep your crypto. It's much safer than keeping it on an exchange or keeping it yeah. in a different place. I mean, it's ultimately, it's, it's encryption, it's never safe to, private key's private key, right? right? I mean, we've seen this before. Exactly. It's not rocket science. But even if you keep, keep it in your home and you're safe, that's not as safe as putting it yeah. in a facility that is uh, you know, resistant to nuclear attack and has uh, four layers of security and no human can get into the last room. It's a, it's a physical connection. I mean, I've heard this problem just on I mean, just estate planning. Someone dies, where's his crypto key? Exactly. Un unlocking, say, 30 to 100 million dollars right. worth of crypto. Exactly. It's not obvious. Well, the guy was smart. He put them in lockboxes all around the country. Wait right. a minute, he, no one knows where they are. But as a custodian, if you show us that you are the uh, ultimate heir and you have the legal representation, then we yeah. can handle it, right? We can transfer that. But, but really, you're protecting it against a hacker coming in and stealing it from you. The legal, all the legal yeah. ramifications still apply. So let's talk about the industry. What do you like about the industry right now? And what do you think that needs to do more work on faster uh, or behavior wise? What's your general temperature taking of the current community? A lot of back end work being done. I mean, some complaints I heard in about the demos were some people say the front end was pretty sucky. Yes. But I think that's because a lot of back end work's being done. Well, this and reminds me of uh, 95 through 2000. I, yeah. I, I, I wrote some of the original VoIP protocols and everybody told me it's not going to work, the internet is too slow, you can't scale, it's not safe. Yeah, I yeah. hear the same arguments again it's and exactly again. Exactly. Today a billion people use VoIP every day and they don't yeah. even know who created it or how it works. You know, I go in a room, I do speeches, right, and ask, who here knows how VoIP works? Not a single hand goes up. <laughs> so we need to get to the point where blockchain and crypto works the same way, where now no one needs to understand how it works, they just need to use it yeah, and, yeah. and trust it. So. The, the biggest thing I think holding us up right now is actually not technical, because there's over 130 different blockchains. Yeah. And some of them solves the scalability issue and security issues. The problem is, is that we kind of have the early adopter phase, but we cannot leapfrog into the mass adoption phase. Because we're still at the early 
early is that just of is this just evolution or is it or is there something specific? Well, they, the application that we have today are not things that most of the people on the planet can use. That's what I'm saying. Like for example, lending and borrowing is much more attractive than trading coins with each other. Yeah, it's like the web I and mean, Web 1.0. I mean, exactly. Search was was the first application, and everyone went to there, checked their stock. Quotes. Booking your travel, travel, buying uh, a car, exactly. Basic, you know, Maslow's exactly. hierarchy of needs kind of things. Yes. So, but the, but that was inter interesting because it was a whole new way. And by the way, same arguments I heard in the web. It's so slow. A mini computer is so much faster than this AOL thing at right. 9600 baud modem. But it wasn't displacing. The apples weren't com being compared to other apples. It was replacing direct mail where I used to put stamps on envelopes and Let, mail. That's things. right. Look, <laughs> yeah. the bank gives you 1%. We pay 5%. So that is a very attractive reason to switch from the bank to Celsius. Also, most people don't realize that the power the bank has is because we make all the deposits there, right? We stop depositing money there, they will have to pay us 5% because as the money leaves them, they will have to raise the rates, right? They're going to have to attract you with more uh, interest. So it's it's a win-win. We all, the community wins on the crypto side and we're okay. forcing the banks to do the right thing. All right, I want to get your opinion, Alice, on ICOs. Um, did you guys do an ICO? How much did you raise? And what's your general take of the ICO market? I mean, certainly blockchain, I've said this before, takes inefficiencies and makes them highly efficient. And we know the capital markets are yes. very inefficient, so it's a bubble, okay. Because <laughs> I have a choice, tokens or VC. Exactly. It, it's no brainer, go tokens. So look, I, I've had coins since 2013. I've invested in over 30 ICOs myself. And then when I couldn't find uh, what Celsius does, I decided to start a new company. This is my eighth company as a founder, right? And so I raised a billion dollars on the VC side. I know how that, wor how that world works, had plenty of exits. And here, we went to the community, we excluded all the VCs. We did not take money from a single venture guy because this is all about building the community. So we just closed our round, uh, our raise, uh, about a month ago, we raised $50 million. From We had 15,000 people uh, sign up 95% men, and it just drove me crazy because half of our company is women. I thought that at least half of the people would be female. Yeah. And I realized how big the problem is that we do not, I mean, if you look at the floor here, we do not include the stronger sex. Satoshi's female, exactly. Not promoting, so promoting it here. I agree, I, I'm a big supporter too. So so I think when you think about it, it we, we if we want to be inclusive and we want this revolution to take hold, we have to solve these problems. What is the killer app? Where are the, uh, the female participants? How do we make it global? How do we make it inclusive? And how do we make the user interface and everything else so simple that you don't have to understand anything to use it every day? And what's your uh, vision on how the ICOs are going to trend? Right. More stability, obviously. You know, it's just, it'll level out. I mean, the bubble will, will either, I don't think it'll be a massive pop. I think it's going to be a, a small squeeze. So I think there's enough community involvement that self-governance will kick in my opinion, but what's your take on, on so the ICO? We, we definitely, this is like a Cambrian explosion. So we are throwing money at everything, right? So you, we're throwing money at good projects, bad projects. It's like a spray and pray mentality, you know, <laughs> of, of the, the old days, the 95 through 2000. We've seen that before. But from this, some great companies are going to be born. and and and. I think the winners here are going to be bigger than Google, bigger than Apple, because the market is bigger. Money is the biggest market in the world, right? There's nothing bigger than all the money in the world, yeah. right? By definition. So it's bigger than advertising, and it's bigger bigger than the social networks, and it's bigger than yeah. the Apple with whatever they're making, right? So I believe that out of these companies, there are several thousand companies here, right? There's 8,000 participants. There were 4,000 ICOs that already took place or that are coming uh, to be. Yeah. And out of that, you're going to have few giant winners. And obviously, yeah. Celsius is hoping to be one of them, but it's whoever builds the biggest community, yeah. he's the one that's going uh, is going to win. And for us, it's all about giving back everything to the community, right? The mission's awesome. I love your mission, and I love your expertise, love your experience. I think the community really uh, is great to have you in uh, being a champion, being a mentor. I know you're doing a lot of paying it forward. Great, great job. Uh, what's your what's your view for the uh, young entrepreneur out there or someone who's got a growing opportunity that says, hey, you know what? I'm actually tailor-made for decentralization. I have a network a community, a network effect. I have all these great things going on. Um, I want to scale. 
That's, That's a great playbook. question because a lot of people come to me and say, oh, I'm too late to the game. No one is too late to the game. The experts have a six months uh, experience, you know, like, <laughs> so you talk to most of the people here, this is the first event, this is the first show. So I, what I say to a lot of entrepreneurs is that if you pick the right vertical, you can very quickly become the best in the world at it. And I think that the, the, the blockchain, the first phase of evolution here on the blockchain is all about financial products and financial solutions. I wouldn't go after healthcare, I wouldn't go after, so like insurance or, or, or fin solving yeah. financial problems that currently have giant toll collectors who, yeah. co who collect all the value, right? Like the banks or like the financial uh, service providers, or insurance and so on. So, if you can solve those areas, you can scale very quickly because yeah. the internet already has six or seven billion people on it. Yeah. So now you can just bring them all in and hodl on their behalf in, in the crypto community. I feel like I should lie down on the couch and ask Dr. Alex for some more advice. <laughs> so I'm actually going to ask you some specific No couch advice. here, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no off switch here. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass out. So much action going on. So great, I mean, the vibe here is amazing. So, I gotta, so the Cube, we're doing uh, open token on model. Got a great community. We want to grow and be number one at digital media, yes. covering events with a network effect, video and media. We see token as a great opportunity. What's your advice? If you're on our advisory team, what do you tell us to do? So the curation is excellent. I think you guys do a great job at kind of pooling the content. And, and what, what's missing in this community is really a process, an, a, an automated process that kind of asks the community, what do you guys believe in, right? Yeah. I mean, it's very hard for most people here to figure out which ones of these thousands of projects are trending right now, for example, right? And we can all vote on our app, for example. If you created an app that allowed all of us to vote during the show on what's trending, and you had those guys being interviewed instead of me, uh, you would have the killer apps. <laughs> All of us know what they are in our so you use collective vote on it. So use collective intelligence of the data yes. and make a uh, content use operating system. Use your metadata, system. exactly. Use your metadata that you're already wow. producing to do real-time input and bring those guys here, interview them and ask them about uh, yeah. why why their projects are hot. Like yeah. Celsius, I mean, people ask me all the time, how do I get involved, how do I get involved? You know, I saw you on Rubini, I saw you on this show. You know, and, and so we, we managed to create a lot of buzz around us and there are a few other projects like that, and the community needs to get yeah. around the good projects and support them, because when we spend money, a lot of money on bad projects, we're not giving enough support to the good projects. You got to close loop that data, make it a community brand. That's what you're doing, that's what we're trying to do here, yes. covering the events. So we're going to build a content operating system. There we go. Runtime assembly, what, whatever the vote. Let everybody and, vote in real time, yes. Give me 50 hashtags, and 50 times I see the hashtag. Right, and the size of the name grows based on the adoption. You would have to have like clips instantly available. You have to have all the metadata. It's all you real have to time. Have all that stuff and, available. And the community will post it for you. You don't even. You just do this final interview. You just bring <laughs> these guys and say, "Okay, yeah. you won number one, number two, number three, and and uh, you give them the awards." You Alice, know? I love this conversation, even though we're kind of riffing, having fun. But the, <laughs> the point of it is, you're. Hey, it's a, a new startup. Let's do an ICO. Hey, let's do an ICO. We're gonna get focus <laughs> on that. No, but this is really fundamental for the entrepreneurs. At the tech culture. We're, we're talking about basically DevOps. Yes. Using cloud computing, we you now can unlimited. spin it up in, in a few days. You can you apply know? automation, AI, and that's your point. Yes. Trust the software. Yes, but if have, you're doing it for the community, they will recognize it and adopt you very quickly. And they'll apply a human cur yes. curation layer on top of it. With full transparency. You yeah. got to show that you're doing everything for the community. Like, yeah what we're trying to do, right? We're showing, when we tell you you're going to earn 5.1%, you can dig in and see who's getting paid and why they're getting this much money, what's the allocation, every token that's being given to anyone, all the math behind it is fully transparent, right? Final question. Try what? to ask your bank for that. <laughs> yeah, see what they say. Transparency? You're, go, go find another bank. <laughs> Final question, your, your uh, summary of the show. What's your take? Was it good, good vibes? What was the content agenda? What was the most exciting thing you saw? What's your a summary of Consensus 2018? So Consensus, when they organized it, they were bragging that 4,000 people are going to show up. And that's why they moved to the Hilton from the Marriott. And then 8,000 people show up. The lines were outside the hotel room, right? The, the whole hotel. So, so it proves that the demand is there. Everybody wants to come and learn about it. They want to know why this is so hot, what, what, why this revolution is here to stay, right? And I think. Uh, so my my uh, uh, the, what, what I'm taking out of the show is that this is this innovation is just in its uh, uh, infancy, and there's a lot of people who got, who still yet to join, and the best ideas the winners have not yet been decided. 
So uh, watch out for all those new ideas that are yeah. that we haven't heard about yet. And it's accelerated yes, from it's other trends. Yes, definitely accelerating. Alex Mashinsky, CEO of Celsius, former entrepreneur, of multiple startups. See, he knows the old way. He sees the new way. Been a successful entrepreneur, seasoned uh, community member. Thanks for coming Thanks on. Thanks for appreciate having it. us. I appreciate it. I'm John Furrier here with the Cube on the ground, out in the open, doing it in the community. Cube coverage here of Blockchain 2018, Blockchain Week 2018, New York. Thanks for watching.